do you think about the new train garden? I love the new train setup. I love that it goes up in height, and it really looks interesting this year. I just love it. And what else did you uh, find here today? You were shopping, doing a little bit of shopping today over here. I bought some things for my own train garden. I bought some new houses for my train garden and a village skating pond. So it was well worth the trip in today when I crossed to go to the post office. So how big is your train garden? My train garden at home right now I have a 4x10 at home and I'm getting ready to put up another 5x8. Um, well, I, have, I have an o, o gauge and now I want to put up a, um, I have an HO and now I want to put up an O gauge, right? Isn't it an O gauge? Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. There's, there's, there's. What are these? There's, uh, well, there's different sizes. There's right. uh, some up on the top and um, I'm not really sure exactly all of what Dwayne has in the garden this year. I haven't looked it over as but of the yet. the garden looks really so nice much. this year. I like the levels. O gauge. O -gauge. Right. O gauge. O -gauge. That's what I, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm building a new O gauge. Yes. Well, the size that you're talking about can be a lot of work because I put together a four by eight with uh, dual trains and uh, a figure eight, and it was so much work and all the little houses and it I, is a I, lot of work. I started it from scratch and uh, it was a lot of work. So um, this is very impressive here. All these bigger gardens. So uh, thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful holiday. Thank you. I'll be back again. How long you got into the project now? Three weeks? Yeah, that's all the time we get. Yeah, but that's three weeks here, but you did a lot of work yeah. this year off-site. Putting the boards together, working on the trains. And we built platforms and then we brought them up and then assembled them here. We built the platforms down in St. Helena. And how much longer do you have to go? Until Friday. We have no choice. There's absolutely no choice. I mean, if it's 24 7 for me the next couple days, that's the way it's going to be. So you got three more days to, to finish it. Yeah. Clean up, Skirt. get the fence up, the skirting. We got to make a fence. The old fence is completely destroyed. Not completely, but it's messed up. So, Dwayne, you want to tell me a little bit about the train that's at the top? Oh, uh, that was my father's train. It's a reproduction train of a Buddy L, which was an outdoor train. Um, it needs a 20 foot radius to turn. And all I have is the train itself. I don't have any power packs or tracks or nothing. There but you have it on display. Yeah, it's just on display because we thought it would be neat to have a giant train <laughs> that everybody could look at. But that's, that's it. It's a reproduction of a 1920s train for the 1920s. And it was my father's, and when he passed away, I inherited it. And it just sits in boxes and bags all year, and then I bring it out once a year, and that's it. And this year we brought it up here. Well, it looks very nice up there. But it's basically a giant toy. <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, we're with Mike Andy at the Dundalk Historic Society talking about the Dundalk Historic Society Train Garden. Mike, what can you share with us today? Yeah, this is our 16th annual train garden here at the Dundalk Patapsco Nick Historical Society. I am very privileged to have a great helper with us this year who's done a lot of off-site work during the off-season, actually, all summer long, been redesigning and rebuilding our platforms, all fresh material. And so we have really good, strong platforms to work with this year. And uh, he's been working with the trains, and his name is Dwayne Phillips. He's with the St. Helena uh, Community Association, and he's done a lot of the work over at their facility and has brought the, the finished product for installation right here at the museum. So it's sort of a little, a little bit of a break for me, and I still have more than my share to do, of course. And we still have a few more days before opening, and we're going to be right down to the wire getting it done. And we're going to have a great layout for everyone this year. So, and, uh, so let me ask, what is the uh, hours of operation, what is the schedule this year? We are open daily starting Saturday, December 5th, from noon till 8 p.m., and we will be closed Christmas Day, and our opening day is going to be hopefully our biggest day of the season, because we got the Dundalk Christmas Parade and all the holiday hoopla, cookie tour, and Santa in the park, and all kind of activities to get us started for the year. And then on the 18th of December is our annual Luminaria Night, and we're 
going to have many, many different participating groups and organizations, churches, all lighting up their properties with these candlelit paper bags filled with sand. And uh, we're going to have music out here on the plaza in front of our building. And it's just going to be a great time. Santa Claus will be here to visit all, all the little ones. So that is also going to be an a, a incredible occasion for us, as it always is every year. And uh, the train garden, of course, is here every single day through the 3rd of January. And luminary night does depend on the weather. It definitely depends on the weather. If it snows, of course, we have to call it off. If it's extremely windy, we'll have to call it off, and of course, if it rains. There is a bad weather date, which would be Sunday, then uh, Saturday, I guess, the 19th. Friday is the 18th, which is the original date. And uh, so hopefully we'll get it in on the date that we're scheduled, Friday the 18th. And if anybody needs to call the Dundalk Historic Society for any other information, they can call 410-284-2331. That's it. Thank you so much, Mike. Great job again. Have a great holiday season. Come join us here at the Dundalk Historical Society and check out this year's presentation of our train garden.